A very good evening, everyone. My name is Peljit Kaur, and uh, today I'll be presenting the features of language learning strategies with my group members, Radin, Mardiana, and also Madiha. So starting off with the features of the first features of a language learning strategy, which is setting regular goals, where it develops the ability to use target language effectively in real life situation. So over here, the activities are designed to help learners to develop the target language effectively based on the real life situation, where it involves not just mastering grammar and vocabulary, but also understanding the cultural norms nonsense and also using appropriate register and being able to convey and interpret the meaning of accurately and fluently spoken language. Moving on to the second feature which is um, allow learners to become more self-directed where instead of relying solely on the traditional uh, on the traditional teaching led instructions learner here are encouraged to take uh, ownership on their own learning process. Uh, they also have the freedom to set their own goals, make choices about the material they use, and also take responsibility of, for their own progress. The third feature here will be expand the role of teachers, where teachers here ex ex more of a facilitator and a guide rather than being the sole source of the knowledge. So over here, they create an interactive learning environment where students engage in a meaningful communication. Teacher also um, provide support, feedback, and also guidance as needed as much as the children's need. Uh, but they also encourage the learners to take an effective role on their own learning and also promote uh, peer interaction. And the fourth feature will be problem-oriented where activities are centered around authentic real-life communication tasks that uh, presents learners with challenges to overcome. So over here, the task requires learners to use language creatively and strategically to solve problems to negotiate meaning and also achieve communicative goals. This uh, will help the learners to actually develop not only the linguistic skill, but also the critical thinking skill, problem solving skill, and also the collaborative skill. So moving on, I will pass to my partner. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I'm Nadi Mardiana. Continuing from Peljit, I'm going to explain point number five until point number eight. Now, let's look at point number five, which is specific actions taken by the learners. Now, when we talk about uh, learners' action, uh, it involves learners' initiate conversations, asking questions, uh, seeking clarification, expressing opinions, and neg negotiating meaning. So, uh, we talk about learners' action, which is focusing on the starting conversation. The, the learners actively participate by asking questions and discussing topics, showing that they are interested and want to understand more. And then questioning, they ask for more details or explanations when something isn't clear, showing that eagerness to learn. And then when learners share what they think, they're not only learning, but also helping others to see different perspectives. Um, finally, they will understand together, uh, understanding together. They talk with, with others to make sure everyone understands the content fully, which is especially important in learning new languages. Now, moving along to the next point, which is involve many aspects of the learner. So, every learner has unique preferences, strengths, and learning styles. They are individual differences and uh, learner's needs. So, when we talk about learner diversity, different preferences, each learner has their own favorite ways of learning, which helps them understand better and enjoy learning. Recognizing what learners are good at and how they like to learn helps make teaching more effective. Education should fit each learner's needs, making sure everyone can learn in their own best way. And the next point, which is uh, support learning both directly and indirectly. Now, supporting learning direct teaching, this is when teachers give lessons or instructions straight to learners, helping them learn specific topics and then creating a learning environment. This means making a place where uh, learners can explore, ask questions and learn on their own, not just from direct teaching. And then uh, planning learning. By combining direct teaching with a supportive environment, learning becomes more well-rounded, covering all parts of a subject. And then point number eight, not always observ observable. So happen inside a learner's mind and might not be obvious to others. These include mental process processes like memory tricks, planning and managing feelings about learning, internal process, um, inter internal processes thinking and strategizing. So learning involves a lot of thinking. 
remembering and planning that others can't see. It is important to handle emotions uh, very well. Feelings about learning like nervousness or excitement affect how well, how well learners can engage with the material and it is not always visible. Much of the learner, sorry, much of the learning uh, happens inside the, learning, the learner's mind and might not be obvious but it is essential for understanding and progress. All right, thank, uh, thank you. That's all. Thank you, Diana. Hi, everyone. My name is Madiha. Now, moving on swiftly to number nine, the features of language learning strategies. It is often conscious. So, technically, learners conscious, consciously decide which methods to use, monitor their progress, and change strategies if needed. So, what do we mean by this? Is that students, when we learn a new language or when we're teaching students in order to learn another language of their own, um, they would need who they, they are conscious of what kind of method they are using. So essentially, even teachers often need to teach these strategies directly so that learners know how to use them effectively. So, for example, learners may choose their own goal. Learners may choose, okay, this week I will be, I don't want to use this kind of type of method. I want to use another type of method. So that means that learners are conscious when learning English. Next, can be taught. So, Technically, um, language learning strategies for can be taught, meaning that we need to show learners different ways to improve their language learning skills on their own. So various strategies, demonstrations on how to use them, and also to give learners their own chances to practice by perhaps, I guess, offering feedback and also help learners reflect on what works best for them. So when you teach the strategies, teachers help learners to become better at learning their own languages sorry, to, 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 to learn languages on their own. Um, the number 11 is um, flexibility. So learners can change their methods based on what, what works best with them. So number 11 is often misconstrued or like uh, with number nine, but technically it's very different because while number nine is conscious, Number 11 is more towards flexibility. So even though uh, students, perhaps they know they are conscious that um, strategy A is the best for everyone. However, they feel like based on their learning style and goal, they feel that perhaps learning style B would suit them best uh, in terms of learning language. Therefore, this sort of flexibility would help the learners to overcome challenges, a response to feedback, and use new resources effectively. And lastly, the last features is influenced by a variety of factors. So um, this is shaped by various factors like individual differences, goals, context, culture, and proficiency level. What do we mean by this? Learners um, are all unique. Each one of us are unique. So we have uh, different backgrounds, different motivations, and learning um, environments that would, without no doubt, influence, influence the methods that uh, we use. So younger learners may perhaps prefer like interactive approaches um, while, for, uh, while highly motivated individuals that are on the older, like older perhaps, may explore different kinds of strategies in learning English. Um, for example, resources that are available, cultural value, and also prior experiences may also play some role. So new learners, novice, novice learners might focus on basic of like learning vocabularies. Um, meanwhile, then the advanced learners would take on more complex tasks. So by, by understanding this um, sort of variety of influence, influences would help the educators or the teachers choose what are the best strategies for effective language acquisition because we can't really put um, an advanced learner strategy towards a, a, a beginner level strategy. That will not fit. So that's why it is important for number 12, the teacher to be there. So that is all for our group presentation. Um, these are the 12 features of language learning strategies. Thank you very much. I hope everyone enjoyed it.